So we had a new government, uh, it's now about three and a half years ago. Uh, and one of the first things that our foreign minister did was that she decided that um, uh, her foreign policy was going to be feminist. Uh, this was also at the same time as our prime minister decided that his whole government was going to be feminist. Um, <coughs> and then um, you can wonder, what does that really mean? Uh, for us, who were, I was then uh, uh, already in Mozambique, and we all got this message uh, that now there is going to be a feminist foreign policy. <laughs> Everyone, please be so kind and think about what that means uh, in your day-to-day -day work. Uh, and I remember we were sitting at my embassy, we were about 30, 35 people maybe. Uh, and we, I, so I called the staff and I said, okay guys, let's talk about what are we, you know, what is this really now? And I remember that several said, what's new, you know? We haven't we done this all along? You know, it's like we're Swedes, right? So we do gender stuff. That's sort of our thing, right? Uh, but then when we start thinking about it, we realize that there was actually quite a lot of things we could do. Um, and I think this is very much based on when, when this was introduced, the idea was that the feminist foreign policy is based on, we could say, three R's. Uh, so it's rights, which means equal rights. So that means human rights, it means economic rights, it means political rights, all rights you can think of should be equal. Uh, access to those rights should be equal, whether you're a man or a woman, or a girl or a boy. The other R is representation. And the same thing there, you know, equal representation uh, politically, economically, uh, I guess those would be socially, I mean, in all, in all spheres of society. And the third R was resources. So equal access to resources and equal rights to have resources and do what you want with those resources. And that resources, of course, you would think um, about having jobs. It could be um, access to land, which in many countries is the si same thing as a resource. It's, it's the land that you have, you know, that you can inherit land, for example, even mm -hmm. if you're a woman. Uh, but also issues around gender budgeting, which I'm sure you're all familiar with. My generation don't really know what that is, but I'm sure you know what that, what that means. If not, you can ask me now, I'll let you know. Um, and then, of course, uh, the question is why? You know, why would we want to have a feminist foreign policy? Uh, and that, uh, I think, was maybe the easiest question to answer. Because if you decide to exclude 50% of your population, you're going to have a tough time to grow as a society uh, and develop uh, as a community. Uh, and especially now, I think when we have our Agenda 2030, uh, it becomes even more clear, and I think to a growing number of people around the world, that you cannot pull that off if you don't include everyone. Um, so it sort of makes um, basic sense. Uh, whether you are a, want to call yourself a feminist uh, or not, uh, I think uh, realizing that it makes financial sense at least, uh, you know, I think most people would, would agree to. Uh, so my experience a bit from Mozambique was then this, we did this exercise, but it was also very much, the big difference that I felt was that we had now formulated this, you know, using this word feminist, it has a, an interesting effect on people. I don't know if you have experimented with this, but if you are in Mozambique and you are a, a new Swedish, um, reasonably young uh, ambassador and you're a woman, and you use the word feminist, uh, you will have a reaction. Mm -hmm. And it, it was interesting for me to see that in the beginning, you had this little people didn't really know where to look and they giggled. Mm -hmm. And you know, they sort of, <laughs> you know, that it was something that was a bit embarrassing or it was a bit uncomfortable and they didn't really, what does this really mean? And why is she saying feminist? You know, what is that really? It's like, oh, we don't wanna, we don't wanna talk about that really. And what I experienced was that I insisted on, on talking about feminism and what that meant, and fem I, I represent a feminist government. The interesting thing was that after a few months even, people stopped giggling. And you could see that there was a, a little bit of curiosity. Uh, and there were some of my colleagues that pro probably thought I was crazy to insist, and others that thought I was very brave. Uh, that I sort of stuck to it, uh, but to me it was easy because it was it came from a place of um, where I felt that it was very sincere. Because I really, really believe that there is no craziness around saying that you're a feminist. It just means that you believe in equal rights. Period. There's no, you know, it's nothing mystical about it.